You've probably heard a lot of talk about pardons in the last few days. There is the recently uncovered bribery for pardon investigation by the DOJ. There's also the reporting that President Trump has been considering blanket pardons for his family members. The Trump family pardons are interesting because you probably wouldn't shield someone from legal prosecution unless you had a feeling they might be facing legal trouble. And now we're getting a better picture of what President Trump might be trying to protect his family from. Yesterday, Trump's daughter Ivanka was deposed by the Washington, D.C. Attorney General. He's claiming that the Trump Inauguration Committee schemed schemed to funnel money to Trump's D.C. hotel during the week of the 2017 inauguration. The allegation is that the Trump Inauguration Committee spent more than a million dollars of donor funds to book a ballroom at the Trump Hotel. That's cash that went directly into the Trump family's pockets. DCAG Carl Racine claims it's very simple. They broke the law. That's why we sued. Ivanka claims they paid a, quote, fair market rate, (laughs) a million bucks for a hotel ballroom, please. That must be a nice ballroom. Joining me now is Ali Mostel, justice correspondent for The Nation and former U.S. attorney and current NBC News legal analyst Joyce Vance is here with us. Joyce, what kind of wrongdoing is the D.C. attorney general, what would he be looking into uh, with this inauguration case? Could it result in potential criminal charges for Ivanka or anyone else? So right now, the D.C. Attorney General has a civil case, not a case where someone can go to jail, but a case where he's seeking monetary damages. And and here's the crux of the matter. The inaugural committee was a not-for-profit, and not-for-profits have to be upfront about how they spend their, their money. They can only do it for specified purposes. So the D.C. Attorney General, Carl Racine, is actually seeking to return those funds that he alleges were misspent by the inaugural committee and to to devote them to to other charitable institutions in D.C. This is pretty similar to what we saw from the New York Attorney General, who launched a lawsuit against the president's uh, charitable uh, fund, and ultimately it was defunded. It had to be disassembled, and the president's adult children are no longer permitted to be on charitable boards in New York as a result of that lawsuit. So this is civil. Not to say that allegations couldn't be uncovered, however, that would be turned over to criminal prosecutors. Oh, that's interesting. And in terms of the pardons for uh, the president and his family members, um, you know, he's been sort of speculating about self-pardoning. Would that shield them from this investigation? You said this is civil, so the pardons have nothing to do with this. That's absolutely right. Pardons only apply what the president can issue, would only apply to a federal criminal prosecution. And although we've talked, Zerlina, about how broad the pardon power it is, it only covers offenses. So I don't think the president could could issue a pardon that, you know, said something like, I pardon you for anything that you might have done. I, I think he would have to specify offenses in order for a pardon to actually hold up if it were challenged in court, even though that pardon power is extremely broad. Yeah, to that point, Ellie, it feels to me like, I mean, my first question was like, what do you need a pardon for, Ivanka? You know what I mean? And it, it seems like you wouldn't ask for a pardon or think about preemptively pardoning someone you maybe didn't think might be in trouble at some point in the future. I mean, look, the, the Trump crime family does crime. That's that's their thing, right? As, as Joyce just pointed out, this crime that they're being alleged of doing, the civil complaint that they're being alleged of doing in D.C. is exactly what they were accused of doing in New York. So, like, it's their modus operandi. Look, there are, I would argue, legitimate reasons to give a pardon, even if you weren't have suspected of a crime if you really were suspected of, of unfair prosecution or, or retaliatory prosecutions. You could make an argument for a pardon power. I'm not, I just refuse to allow myself to be overly concerned with Trump's wild, broad, fundamentally, as Joyce pointed out, limited authority to inoculate his criminal family members from federal prosecutions. Because so much of what's happening or what's gonna happen is gonna come down the pipe through the state AG's office in this in this great nation, that like that's where we're gonna get him. If we're gonna get him, that's where it's gonna be, right? That's it's always gonna be in Tish James' office or Xavier Becerra's office in California or in one of these other jurisdictions where they have been where they are suspected of crime. And I would just I would just back up for a second and remind people that if 
the state prosecutors had taken the Trump organization seriously, if they had taken it as a serious criminal organization in the last few decades, if Elliot Spitzer had come down the pipe against the Trump organization, if Cy Vance had come down the pipe against the Trump organization in the 2000s, we might never have him been president in the, in the, in the first place. So these prosecutions, if they yes. come for them, and we don't know, we don't know the evidence, if they come for them, are going to come through the state, through the state AG's office and the state and the local prosecutor's offices, and and that's and Trump can't pardon his family out of that. Can't pardon your way out of state crimes. I mean, I feel like you should just know this by now. After four years in the Trump presidency, people are getting a legal education um, in the Trump presidency. Um, they're like obstruction of justice. They now understand every all the elements. Okay, NBC News is reporting, uh, Joyce, that uh, sources within the White House say President Trump has not ruled out firing Attorney General Bill Barr after all that he has done. Uh, reportedly, the president is mad at him now um, and said that Barr hasn't, uh, because Barr has said he se hasn't seen any fraud that would change the outcome of the presidential election. NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Welker asked the president about that just uh, a little bit earlier today. Well, he hasn't done anything, so he hasn't looked. Do you still have confidence in Bill Barr? Uh, ask me that in a number of weeks from now. He looks different uh, in that video, Ellie. I hadn't seen that tape yet. <laughs> uh, Ellie, should uh, Bill Barr be worried right now? I mean, it, it seems like whenever the president is like, pauses when he's asked a question like that, that's just not going to be good for you. In a number of weeks, Trump's going to be gone. He's going to so he's going to fire Barr what twenty days before he has to leave, as opposed to fifty days before he has to leave. Why, is, why does anybody care about this? Donald Trump is still somewhere in his in his brain thinks that he's still going to be the president after January twentieth. He ain't. He lost. It's over. So maybe he fires Barr before them as some kind of you know really what's what's a, what would what, what would be annoying to me if Trump fires Barr is that it would serve as reputation laundering for Barr who has been one of the most destructive mm. attorney generals in the history of the country getting fired by Trump almost retroactively like tries to launder Barr's awful reputation so I hope he doesn't fire fire Barr before before the before the official end but like it's ending, so it really doesn't matter what Trump, whether or not Trump has confidence in Barr, because they all got to, they all got to get out, they all got to get out of our house on January twenty. Yeah. It's true, but Joyce, I mean, what does it actually, what does it say that the president, after all this, after the Mueller, um, you know, memo spin uh, and the Mueller report spin, and all of the things that he's done to support the president, essentially be his own personal attorney as attorney general. Um, what does it say that he's going to fire him now? And it's really only because he's doing the job correctly. Uh, so I guess, Serlina, this is just proof that karma is for real. Um, we, we know from watching this administration that Trump can't stay happy with anyone for any period of time. And I think it's important to look at what Bill Barr actually did, because this was the meekest of disagreements with the president. It came weeks after it was clear that there had been no fraud in this election and that Joe Biden was the winner. It was a, a very watered down statement that just said that there hadn't been significant widespread fraud. The attorney general really just was issuing pablum and the president seized on even that. So as, as Ellie says, Bill Barr does not deserve to have his reputation laundered. He has acted as the president's lawyer, not the people's lawyer, but there is a lot of karma going on here. Absolutely. Karma is, you know what? <laughs> Ellie Mistel and Joyce Vance, thank you so much for being here tonight.